Hi guys, today I'm doing another one of the requests that you sort of gave me for content and that is some of you were curious to know about my fascination for taxidermy as I have showed off my collection in the art tour that I did and I talk a fair bit about it on my Twitter and other places and I thought I would just take you through my collection today and maybe talk a bit about why I like it so much. I don't know if I can give that good of an explanation other than I just enjoy it, but let's go. And you'll even notice that I'm wearing my red deer antler tip earrings today. Uh, they're from Virginia the Wolf on Etsy. Uh, she does really, really cool uh, taxidermy and bone jewelry, and I would highly recommend uh, having a look at her page if you're ever interested in having some bone earrings or necklaces. They're just really beautiful works. So let's get into it. So the first piece of taxidermy I ever got was this matte black rodeo skull, which I got towards the end of 2015 as a housewarming present to myself when I moved to Hull, which, as you may know, was rather short-lived. But still, it kind of kickstarted the collection. I'd always wanted to look into getting skulls and the like, but I was never really sure where or how and I, I was just having a look on Etsy and I believe the shop was called Star Fox Skulls and yeah, that was how I got my first piece. And then that was very quickly followed by a matching one from the same shop, except this one is painted gold. This is also how I started uh, the tradition of giving all of my skulls names. I said before in my art tour, but the black one is called Stanley and this gold one is called Bill after Stanley Pines and Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls because it's one of my favourite shows in the world. And a lot later on, to complete the trio, I got this beautiful abnormal Rodeer, who is of course called Stanford because he has the extra piece. But yeah, he just has a little extra to his antlers, which meant that I immediately needed him in my collection because I like um, sort of oddities within taxidermy as much as I like just plain skulls. And I, I don't know how to explain why they fascinate me so much. I think initially it was a case of I really love stags. Um, I love their antlers. I love the different kinds of antlers that different species of stags have. So it was just a way of representing that. And I've always been I don't want to say morbid, but ever so slightly morbid and into things that are a little bit more macabre. So having mounts that I can put on my wall just seemed like a super cool thing for me. I like the skulls, I like the way the bone looks. Again, I just love the shape of the antlers. So it just really seemed like a kind of me thing to do. And ever since, I found like various sources where I know that I can get ethical and vulture culture taxidermy from, which means that it's not an animal that's been recently hunted, it's either vintage, uh, so it was killed a long time ago, or it's part of things that people have just found when they've been out looking for stuff in the wilderness. Ever since I found sources for that, I've always just sort of been on the lookout of more skulls and bits and bobs that I can add to my collection. Which then brings us to when I found a wonderful shop called Dead Things by Kate, which is a taxidermist in the UK, so I can order from her really, really easily. And the first piece I got from her was this tiny little bat skull. Again, I love bats, and anatomy is kind of interesting to me. Like, not majorly so, but skeletons, I think, are pretty cool. So I love bats, and when I saw that she had this for sale, I absolutely had to have it. Uh, his name is Regis, after one of my favourite characters from the Witcher series, who's a higher vampire, so that makes sense. And just sort of considering the fact that I tend to go towards animals that I'm interested with, with getting skulls, I think it's just a way of keeping parts of creatures that I feel linked to close to me. The next one I got from uh, Kate was then this crow skull, it's called Zevran, as in Zevran from Dragon Age Origins because he's part of the crows. Again, it's an animal that I'm really sort of fascinated by and it would be cruel to keep these kinds of things as pets. So having part of one that sort of 
past and finished its place in the world. It feels like this kind of interesting connection to nature and just having a part of the wild within my home space. Uh, again, from Dead Things by Kate, I have this absolutely gorgeous fox skull. Um, it does sort of come apart, but slots back together. Oh, I was gonna say fairly easily and now I won't be able to do it on camera. There we go. This one took a while to name because I couldn't really think of anything that stuck with her. I usually name them after uh, characters from things that I like that either have a link to the animal, the way it's presented, like the, um, the Pines twins and Bills being the way that they're painted and the one having the extra antler, and then Regis and Zevran, both the characters are sort of linked to those animals. But uh, when I fell into my obsession with the Grinning Man musical last year, I just eventually decided to call her Dea after the lead female, because I really liked the character. And I think the skull is just gorgeous and white like her hair. From another Etsy shop, I was looking for raccoon skulls, but I couldn't manage to find any in particular that weren't rather expensive because they were coming from European countries. But I did find these two jawbones for cheap. They just about slot together, so I think it must be part of the same raccoon. But I like that I can display them separately. And I guess if you were a LARPer or something, you could always use it as part of armor. But I just like to display these in my room. Raccoons are another animal that I very much enjoy, so I, I do think my appreciation for taxidermy must just come from my appreciation for nature and wildlife, because I'm always on the lookout for animals that I think are interesting. I would love to get a proper raccoon skull, I would love to get a badger skull. One that I've been searching for for a really long time is a Chinese water deer, because they have the, um, like the tusk teeth at the front, which are super, super cool. But again, because I'm looking through ethical sources, you sort of have to wait until people come across the right kind of piece. In fact, I was about to purchase a Chinese water deer skull. I did, actually. And when I emailed through, Kate, bless her, it was an error on her website. The item had already been sold. So she said, would you like a refund or would you like a surprise gift box? And of course my answer was, a surprise gift box. So I got <laughs> this big jaw piece. I'm not 100% sure on what the animal is, but I think, judging by the structure and the size, it it's probably some sort of deer. I've definitely seen deer on sale in her shop before. I'm not 100% sure. It's not in like totally brilliant condition either, but it's still, it's still very nice and it's a very nice shape. As well as that, she sent me a feather, which isn't really part of my taxidermy collection, and this lovely framed fox jawbone, which I keep on my bedside table. It's not the kind of thing that I would have bought for myself, but I do enjoy having it because I really like the pattern in the back and also just more fox parts are super interesting for me. And then the biggest part of my collection, and possibly my favourite aside from uh, my tiny bat skull, which will always have a special place in my heart, these gorgeous fallow deer antlers. I had been looking for red deer antlers because I like the shape of them a lot more. But Kate had these for sale for just under a hundred pounds, and they—they're gorgeous. They're absolutely a, a lovely shape. I specifically like the left-hand side because it's got more of the points on it. So I couldn't resist <laughs> treating myself at that point in time. And fun fact about these: it had been a few weeks, and I'd visited uh, R and B, and we were doing one of our tabletop sessions for the original Beyond the Light. And in that session, my character, Eric, fought a god that had a massive deer skull for a face. And he did manage to very severely wound it, but was also quite mortally wounded in return. But I like to think that he won that fight. And when I got home, <laughs> in the middle of the night after returning from that trip, this was waiting for me <laughs> at the end of my bed, <laughs> which was kind of terrifying. It was like, oh my god, he's come for me. So I ended up naming it uh, Valor, which is after what the gods in that campaign were sort of called as a collective, or the fallen gods rather. So this is, in my mind, sort of Eric's trophy from that fight, which I quite enjoy. And that is my full taxidermy collection. So I hope that that has given some sort of insight into why 
I'm so interested in it. In fact, I think it's given me some insight into why I'm so interested in it. I just think it's very pleasant to have elements of these creatures that I can keep close to me, especially when I'm so interested in just how nature goes, and especially having the deer skulls when I feel so strongly about stags, which is again something that I wish I could properly put into words, but I just love the majesty of them and the shape of the antlers just really adds this kind of imposing and interesting power to them that I've always felt very not necessarily connected to, but very inspired by. Having that as part of my room is just another way to bring a weird sense of happiness and power to my life. I don't know, I, I just enjoy it a lot. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, even though it's just been a bit of a ramble one. So, until next time, I hope you're well, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye guys.